Hello students, thank you so much for joining us for another one of our youth Bible studies. Tonight we're in part three, which is the final part in our series called Dealing with Doubt. If you missed the first two parts or want to refresh your memory of what we learned during those parts, you can easily find them in the playlist on the Abundant Life Church YouTube channel. There's a playlist called Youth Bible Studies with Pastor Jonathan. Um, you can look right there. That's a quick way to access them or on the main page landing page of our youtube channel you can scroll down and just see the last two youth bible studies and go back and look at them that way but let's dive into part number three this one's got a little bit more in it than the first two parts because we're trying to give a lesson and wrap up this series at the same time okay so let's dive right in as we wrap up this series on doubt let us look together at how we can overcome any doubts that we may have and help those around us who may be struggling with their doubts as well. So this isn't just about us learning how to deal with our own doubts, but how do we help others that are around us that may be doubting also? First of all, tackling our own doubts, tackling our own doubts. First, remember what we have already discussed. God knows our questions, so be honest about them. Be honest with God. Also, Having questions does not make you a bad person. Just because you wonder about something or you're tempted to doubt, that does not make you a bad person. Satan's going to try to make you feel that way, but it's just not true. And also, God is patient with you and he wants to help you. In your moments of doubt or maybe even giving in to doubt, God wants to help you through that and to give you the truth that you need to erase your doubts and replace it with faith. So with these in mind, here are some other suggestions that I want to give you to help you as you deal with doubt in your own life. Number one, go to God in prayer and study His Word. Go to God in prayer and study His Word. Look for the answers that God has already given you and I. Focus on what you do understand, what God has or is teaching you, rather than on what you do not understand. Too often we get so sidetracked and the enemy, Satan, will try to do it in our lives where he gets us so focused on looking at all the things that we don't yet understand or that, we're, or that we don't have an answer to instead of focusing and building up our faith on the things that we know for certain. James 1 and 5 says it like this, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. There is no lid on that uh, wisdom that God's talking about. He's not saying that you can ask for wisdom about this or wisdom about that, but not this particular thing. No, anything we lack wisdom for, we can ask, ask for it. Here are a few other verses for you on that. John chapter 20, verses 27 and 31. John chapter 20, verses 27 and 31 says this. Then Jesus said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my sides and reach your hand here and put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. We covered this in a previous lesson about doubting Thomas, as we called him, about how he had his doubts. But here God showed him the truth in the midst of his doubts to erase his doubt and instead to build his faith. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 says this, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. It's important that we remember that. One more verse on this is Colossians 1, 9, and that is this, For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. Here it is again, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So the first suggestion I made for you is this. Go to God in prayer and study his words when you're doubting. Number two, rely on facts, not feelings. Rely on facts, not feelings. Trust the facts and what God says is true. Do not allow your emotions to confuse the truth. Do not allow your emotions to confuse the truth. Psalms 19 verse number one 
helps us with that when it says this, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. It also says in Job 23 and 10, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. These were two individuals going through a very difficult time in their life and they chose to believe in the facts of who God is instead of being driven by their feelings or led by their feelings. Number three, third suggestion I want to make for you, and that is this. Surround yourself with Christian friends who can encourage you. Surround yourself with Christian friends who can encourage you. Talk to them. Ask them questions and learn from what God has shown them and taught them in their life, especially in the difficult times of their life and the times that they were tempted to doubt or maybe even doubting God. So that's for you, me trying to help you wrestle with the doubts that are in your life. Let's shift a little bit here now, and I want to talk about helping those around you who have doubts, helping those around you who have doubts. God may desire to use you to help someone who is struggling in an area of doubt. When he does, keep these things in mind. Number one, be merciful to those who doubt. Be merciful to those who doubt. Don't cast guilt and shame upon them, but instead show them mercy. Jude, verse number 22, says this, And on some have compassion, making a distinction. Number two, not only be merciful to those who doubt. Number two, accept them where they are. Accept them where they are. Romans 14 and 1 says, Receive one who is weak in the faith. But do, but not to disputes over doubtful things. Sometimes people get weak in their faith and they begin to waver a little bit. The Bible talks a great deal about that. And you and I have a responsibility to not only be merciful to them when they doubt, but also to accept them where they are because God wants to take them from where they are to where they need to be. When helping those around you who are doubting, remember this, number three, help with a spirit of patience. Help with the spirit of patience. 1 Thessalonians 5.14 says this, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak. And here it is, be patient with all. Be patient with all. They may be weak in their faith. They might even be doubting. They might even be on the precipice of wondering if any of it really even matters, if truth even exists. Be patient with them. Be merciful to them when they doubt. Accept them where they are. Help them in a spirit of patience. And number four, teach them what God has taught you. Teach them what God has taught you. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4, Paul describing one of the darkest, most difficult times in his life and ministry, and he says this, Who comforts us in all our tribulations, speaking of God, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. In other words, God will take our experiences of when we doubt it or in a difficult place and God comforts us, gives us truth, and brings us into a place of strong faith and belief in Him again that we then can turn around and do the same thing for someone else, to share with them our experience. And then God can use what we went through to comfort someone else and build their faith in God also. Closing thought that I want to give you is this. In many ways, the Christian life is a journey in which our faith grows stronger every single day. May God help us to seek after the truth, to cling to the answers God gives us, and to develop a faith by which we can confidently and boldly live our lives for Jesus Christ. Now, you know I always give out homework, and here it is. I want you to read and then memorize 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. I even gave you the verse at the very end of your study guide, but it's 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. All right? Uh, let me pray with you, for you, and over you. God, thank you so much for these students. Bless them. Keep them. Help them in their moments of doubt to turn to you, to trust you, and to believe in you like never before. In your name we pray. 
Amen and amen. God bless you, students. So glad you were here again. I look forward to us having another Bible study together again next week. In the meantime, be blessed by God. Bye now.